what it's about is uh, tolerating actors. <laughs> and I've learned over time. <laughs> I've learned patience. I've learned respect. And a little compassion. Oh, a little compassion. You with and I've learned to love <laughs> them. <laughs> Welcome to, <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. Welcome to Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table with the cast of American Fiction. Your books are good, but they're not popular. Editors, they want a black book. They have a black book. I'm black and it's my book. You know what I mean. Look at what they publish. Look at what they expect us to write. I just want to rub their noses in it. <laughs> <laughs> the common factor is how passionate we all were to tell this story Amen. because it seemed like uh, such a rare opportunity. Once we gathered together, you know, we, we met briefly, mostly, yeah. we read a little bit, and then I was like, okay, roll the camera Let's because, you know, we just, it, it, in, in cord, he put us together and he provided so much information through the script. It was rare, really, that we looked to him to say, you know, well, what do you mean here? It was yeah. really more. Yeah. How do you want to, how do we, come on, just, you know, mm -hmm. how do you want to do it? The momentum grew as we went. Mm -hmm. I just felt like growing, yeah. the thing was growing stronger sure. and tighter and uh, it was lovely. I want to turn it back to Jeffrey for a second. Yeah, you, Let's do it. Jeffrey's the kind of actor that when actors are talking about the kind of actors they'd like to be, his name comes up. I look forward, hopefully, to being the kind of actor that Jeffrey is, that people will talk about. That's the kind of actor I want to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I've somehow managed to survive this stuff. You've this been around for a while? I've been around, around for a second. Let's yeah. just start the <laughs> Take it in. Take it but in. Well, no, well, well. well. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I be standing outside in the night. Deadbeat dads, rappers, crack. You said you wanted black stuff. That's black, right? I see what you're doing. I can hear the comedy in my head. I can yeah. hear the beats. I said, I know how this is gonna go. I was laughing. And you know, it's not often that you read and laugh. Yeah, yeah. out loud. And there's no one there. There's no one prompting you. You don't have to, you know, do a table read. And that's exactly what happened. But I just knew how that was gonna turn out. When I first read a script, obviously you're reading for looking for your material. Like, how do I fit into this? Who am I? Particularly as a woman and a black woman, I really do look for the context. Who am I in this? Is this a full person? Mm. Am I just here to set up another character? Am I just here? as window dressing because we need a woman in this role or whatever that is, and my wife wallpaper, whatever those things are. So first you look there, but the thing about this material that was so crazy is I forgot about me and I was so intrigued with Monk and I was so mm. intrigued with what, yeah. where is this man going? What is happening? Why is this funny? This yeah. is so funny. I felt like there were so many universal things that were happening in this story that on all these different levels that allows an audience to take anything they want home from it, but either way, think and feel and laugh and all of those things, which is everything that a good project is made up of, in my opinion. Uh, aside from that, wasn't there anything that compelled you about um, about about my role? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you mean about the project? What was funny is then I closed the last page and I thought, this is not good. <laughs> we sold a book. No. We believe Mr. Lee has written a bestseller. It's a joke. The most lucrative joke you've ever told. Now, is Stag a pseudonym? Yeah. Mr. Lee can't use his real name. Is this based on your actual life? Yeah, you think some college boy can come up with that shit? No, 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 I don't. For me, really, it was the first scene of the movie. Yeah. It was the first. That's what I said. It was the first page. I'll tell you something related specifically to that first scene and understanding the meaning or meanings of the N-word, I yeah. shall say. Sure. Because we have... Mixed company. <laughs> ne never mind. Understood. Uh, so I, I did a movie called uh, Ride with the Devil. And it was a film about the Civil War. I was playing a freedman, or actually a, a former slave, working to free himself, but doing that on the side of the Confederacy. Based on historical mm -hmm. figures, this, was, this took place on the Kansas-Missouri border war yeah. outside of the regular... Uh, army in this scene in which he's, you know, has this, um, you know, kind of the apex of his awakening, his need to emancipate himself. He says, being that man's friend was no more than being his and I will never again be anyone's 
And it's such a self-empowering, empowering statement yeah. and, and, and understanding of the word. The studio at the time was so conflicted about how do we market it and well. Sure. Ultimately, they decided, you know what, uh, we don't need to market this at all. Um, <laughs> well, that's a choice. <laughs> and, Not the one I was expecting you to say. And, and further, you know, we'll put it on, you know, you know, available for video. We'll take that character, him, Jeffrey Wright, off the poster just to keep it, you know, a little mm. more palatable for yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. the, whomever their, you know, their target audience right is on. in Iowa or whatever, at least in their mind. Yeah. And then they had me come do the airplane version of the dialogue. Right, so, What's out? so this, I in, love this. Is my the, favorite part. So they, the so they come in. There were a few curse words and this and that. He said, "Yeah, and this uh, the word here. We, we'd like to change that to uh, ninja, to uh, you know, a Negro <laughs> or whatever, whatever the choice was." Mm-hmm. And I said, "Nah, nah, it's not happening." Mm-hmm. And I headed out the door into my car, and they found some other. No, they did not. To Are come in, serious? And really, do that, and do that one word apparently. Uh, so that the airplane wow. folk would be um, comfy and in, their seats. in the darkness of their own ignorance around the language of race. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. It was crazy. It was so crazy. I just remember a lot of dialogue that had, instead of story, language that was down market, like a lot of F and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And what I do is I just don't say it. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to speak. The way you speak. Yeah, I don't need to urbanize or blackifize. Mm-hmm. They've done it for you. And a, a lot of times, unfortunately, black creators. They've done that to sell it. Your ear tells you that doesn't What's belong. What's true? Or so so I've, that's happened. I think that's also part of the integrity of being an artist is finding that balance and finding the places where your line is. Yeah. Um, what feels true for you and and how you want to manage that. I am a person who speaks up and I have a huge sense of integrity for myself. Not everybody has the bandwidth or was raised with what it takes to have that oh, kind of substance for the themselves. The label of being difficult. Oh, because being that, and that's what it gets, sex. that's what it gets yes. called. That, it that's what I'm known as. a hard to. thing to shake. Yeah, I mean. Especially for sisters. Oh, I'm it's like, no joke. Yeah, it's unreal. If I, I hear one person say, not even on dialogue, I know your hair is difficult. Mm, now, I haven't wow. even said anything. Right. I know your hair is difficult. I'm like, my hair's not difficult. First of all, my hair didn't even do anything yet. <laughs> not yet. What, what, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? For real, for real. Why am I aging? Why is everybody? <laughs> talking about the difficulty of my hair and yeah. I haven't even gotten on set yet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that that precedes even dialogue. Sure. So, you know, things can be, you have to navigate a bit of a landmine and learn how to do that and then find what that means for you in terms of your substance of what you can tolerate, what feels like the healthy, risky choice. What you said about being difficult. Yesterday, I was doing something, was at this place. There was a picture of an actor well-known mm-hmm. actor, very good actor. There's a picture among these other kind of like, you know, archival Hollywood pictures right. of this actor punching a photographer or whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah, And yeah. it's there, like iconic, you know. Yeah. And I said, wow, man, if there were a pic of me. Come on. Come on. <laughs> when I was 24. No, it's not even in the realm of possibility. Yeah. No. We would the, not the table here. would look like this. We would not, there you go. <laughs> Just you know, you, 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 you know I admired yeah, yeah, Jeffrey Wright yes. right when he was in the business. <laughs> the labels Ooh. of passionate and uh, sort of like Come on. all these other things don't necessarily get applied oh. to us in the same way when we execute the same behavior. Awesome. And we all know how to but navigate But we are keenly it. aware. Yes. Yeah. People don't always have, they have a blind spot to what that experience is. Right. If you're able to speak your thoughts clearly, and go to them with a cohesive argument, suddenly you're intimidating, it's mm-hmm. gonna be difficult, as opposed to being like, yo, what's going on? You know, this messed up. I have been punished for yeah. that in life. Yeah. So yeah. it makes me usually not talk at all. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big talker anyway in terms of being on set, I just wanna do it. Mm-hmm. And then somebody will tell me what, you know. But I but I have to say that I've seen over and over again people be labeled certain things. Yeah. I go, you know, it's probably not true. They probably have ideas in their head, they're talking through it, and somebody's said they are a problem. But but that, to your point as well, um, Tracy, speaks to the, the level of conversation 
that we had without words yes, yeah. yes, 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 on yes. this set. Absolutely. And in terms of understanding the relationship between one another and between these characters. That's what happens when you gather around the table, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, a certain group of folks. These books have nothing to do with African-American studies. They're just literature. The, the blackest thing about this one is the ink. I don't decide what sections the books go in, and no one here does. That's how chain stores work. Right. And you don't make the rules. I was in a film called Presumed Innocent with Harrison Ford. Alan Pakula, you know, I mean, one of the masters of American cinema of the golden age of, the, you know, the late 60s, 70s. And, and working there with Harrison and, I, like, we shot out in Queens at Kaufman Story. I think that first day of rehearsal, I had another subway token to get back home, you know, and I'm sitting next to Harrison and he had, was at his, you know, at his absolute prime. Yeah. He taught me something that day. Alan Pakula called to him. He said, uh, Harrison. And Harrison said, uh, sir? And I went, oh, there's a, there's a different kind of decorum and level of respect that is expected in this thing. It's not all fun and games. There was a, it, I'll, never, I'll never forget that. It spoke to his honoring the partnership and honoring the collaboration. I have grown over time, I guess, from that point to come to this place, you know, where I, I so appreciate the collaboration because you can have a great script, you can have a great story, if you don't have the great people, you have nothing. And that's what I love. I've grown really to love about what, what we do is how we do it together. That's it. I, mean, I was so, wondering when he was going to start talking about us. <laughs> so, you got there. You so, got there. So, it, so for me, what it's about is uh, tolerating actors. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I've learned over time. <laughs> I've learned patience. I've learned respect. And a little compassion. Oh, a little compassion. With you with and I've learned to love <laughs> them. But no, I mean, this is, this, is, this is as good as it gets. That's what I mean to say. Yeah. It's as good as it gets. And whatever I'm able to do in this film is absolutely 100%, maybe 99%, because of what they gave me we don't and allowed do it me to work with. We yeah. don't do it in the Yeah, <laughs> especially Erica. <laughs> People want to love you, Monk. You should let them love all of you. There's already so much buzz because of the movie deal. Michael B. Jordan is circling. We want to put him on the cover in one of those um, uh, scarves, I guess you would call them, tied around his head. A do-rag? Do-rag, that's it. Do-rag and a tank top with the muscles showing. Oh, something called the fire department. <laughs> Thanks for watching Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table with the cast of American Fiction. Be sure to check out our film in select theaters on December 15th. And in theaters everywhere in January.